Hey everybody, I hope you're keeping well. Today we're gonna sculpt a goldfish and then we're gonna evolve that goldfish into a different type of goldfish. We're gonna make a telescope more, but we're gonna do it quicker than it took in real life. We're not gonna spend a thousand years putting this thing together. We're gonna get it done in less than nine minutes. Don't you worry, we're gonna time lapse this thing. I'm using Nomad Sculpt here on my phone, just sculpting this up. We're gonna put together its basic body shape. Let's discuss that a little bit. We're doing the common goldfish first of all. We've got to get to our starting point. Now, common goldfish, an opportunistic omnivore, will eat anything it comes across. It's going to eat anything, but it doesn't actively hunt its food. So it wants to be efficient. It wants to be streamlined. It wants to be, you know, good at moving around without expending loads of energy. Your common goldfish is that fish. It's got a short, stocky tail. It's quite strong but it's got a long, slender body. Moves through the water like a torpedo. Doesn't take much effort at all for this fish to do its moving around. That's what we're creating here. Now, we're gonna speed things up a little bit because we'd be all we'd be literally a thousand years doing this if we're gonna sculpt everything up in real time. No, it didn't take me that long. So, they've got a dorsal fin. So that's the fin that sticks out the top of their back and that's designed to kind of keep them upright in the correct position when they're swimming through the water. They also have this strong, stocky tail. A flick of that tail will send them absolutely careering through the water. And if you keep common goldfish, you've seen them, especially during feeding time when they get excited, these guys can move fast. Now let's put together some pectoral fins. They're kind of the ones that are in the position where arms would be. And they use them to kind of just move around in the water. They help right them and keep them in, in the position that they are in the water. They'll use them to change direction. Um, they'll use them quite a bit for just moving around when they're not moving at high speed. Then we have our pelvic fins. If you're a goldfish, these are going to be important for just keeping you balanced and going in the right direction. Keep you upright because you are floating in the water. And then we have our anal fin. That is located just behind the vent. And on our common goldfish, we've just got one of those. And obviously behind that then we've got its tail or its caudal fin. And that is short and stocky and that is powerful and just in front of that there's a part of it called its caudal peduncle that's the bit where its tail is basically joined into its body now obviously your telescope more has big giant eyes but your common goldfish has a relatively small just just a regular eye but they do have four color receptors in it now those four color receptors mean that they can see millions of colors that we can't imagine something that i just think is absolutely fascinating they do have a little bit of roundiness to their body, just where they do have all their organs at the back there. They don't have a stomach. That's not something that they do have. They have an expandable section of their digestive tract um, called their intestinal bulb. And they have this cute little mouth here at the front with an extendable mandible. They can use that basically kind of like a, a bit of a grabber or hand for helping pull out things like roots and stuff like that. Chewing up plants and stuff like that is a bit easier when you can break off pieces. So they use their mouth for that kind of thing. Now look, we kept these as a source of food. We caught these and they were something that we would eat. Then we found some that were really nice colors. So we kept them in areas, ponds and pools and we looked after them because there were religious aspects to it. Something that was considered to be very unique in the animal kingdom and different from the rest of the species was often revered. So we kept them in pools and we wanted to keep them in smaller and smaller spaces, which is why we created this little stocky body. But then we also found this just occasional mutation that was super cool where they had two tails. They had two caudal fins. And then we found mutations with two anal fins and they were selectively bred the great thing about goldfish is when you breed for those mutations selectively they'll lock in pretty quickly so we bred that shorter and shorter body and that meant all those organs and everything had to go into that shorter rounder body and then we found some with lumps on their head now we selectively bred for that and you can see here as they start to accumulate through selective breeding we've basically created an aranda but we're going to get rid of that. That's not what we're talking about today. And that was just fatty tissue that grew on its head. We got those big eyes. So basically, we selectively bred for goldfish which had eyes which just protruded a little bit further. And we kept doing that. And we kept doing that. And we kept doing that. And eventually, we ended up with these eyes that stuck out really, really far. And that's what creates that unique kind of telescope look that your telescope more has. Now, they were again bred to be shorter and stockier and just a little bit higher in the back. And they do have an egg-shaped body. They do look, basically you could fit an egg inside these, kind of at a bit of an angle. And then we did something amazing with their tails. 
we've turned them into butterfly shapes where we selectively bred shaped tails that were just that little bit fancier, that curled forward. And again, through these particular mutations and selective breeding, we bred this short stocky body with these longer flown fins, these beautiful butterfly fins, and created the, the telescope that we have today. The telescopes often come as black and their toes sold as black telescope mirrors, or they come in a range of colors now as well. And butterfly telescope mirrors are an absolutely stunning fish. They are not a good swimmer because that tail is just not designed for swimming anymore. We can see at this point how far removed it is from that original goldfish shape. But again, all selective mutations from that original goldfish. Now I'm just putting in some of the muscles here that do hold their fins in. I don't really handle goldfish too much because their fins are essentially only a couple of cells thick and they have very, very small, tiny bones of cartilage running through it that just keep everything in place and they are quite fragile and they are very susceptible to being damaged and broken. They are, they are just something that you do need to be really careful and netting these guys can actually be really difficult and damaging for them as well. So it's probably better off to catch these guys by handling them, but do so very, very carefully. And those fins, like I said, we've bred them to be bigger and more flowing. It makes them actually just a little bit less useful for the fish themselves and um, because they're not able to put in kind of as much energy at the tips and they just, they are more of a meandering fish that kind of loops about the place, not quite as powerful and robust as that common goldfish. And that actually means that putting them in with common goldfish can cause some issues for them. Sometimes they can find it difficult to get the food just because they'll be outcompeted. The common goldfish will be able to swim faster, find that food a little bit quicker and get in on it and get that all eaten before your telescope will. But the other thing is obviously the big difference between this and any other type of goldfish is that eye. Those eyes are absolutely huge. Now what we've done is we've extended out the basically the distance from the front to the back and we've created an extremely myopic or, or short-sighted goldfish. Their vision has been very negatively affected by this in fact. Now goldfish can survive without eyesight completely. That's that's not a problem. Where you will have an issue, however, is if you do have a goldfish that can't see, being kept with goldfish that can see, they'll see food, they'll be able to outcompete it for that, and the goldfish that can't see quite as well, that's going to struggle. That's going to find it really, really difficult to get in and find that food. So by creating an extremely myopic or short-sighted goldfish, we have done them a bit of a disservice. It's not to their benefit. It is definitely something to our benefit. Now, most of your telescope mirrors will get along absolutely fine and they'll have absolutely no issues. The one thing I would say about it is it does sometimes make them a little bit aggressive during eating because they can get a bit stressed out and if you're keeping them with other goldfish they can kind of tear around the place and and we're just doing some final touches on this one increasing the, the just the size of the caudal peduncle and the shape of the belly and fins and there we are that's it's kind of pretty much that's that's a that's a telescope mirror but yeah those eyes, they can swim around a little bit frantically during feeding time. So I would always recommend remove any sharp objects. They can't see them before they bump into them. They're going to cause themselves some damage. And especially if they've got a butterfly tail, they're just not going to swim quite as well. No strong currents either. But that's it, guys. That's kind of the evolution of the telescope, Mur. And I know it's been different from my usual video. I've just been super exhausted recently and uh, i just needed a little bit of a break but i've i've been working on some modeling software because i said to myself one of my goals this year was to be able to i i just want to learn and um, modeling software so i'm looking at maybe auto desk fusion 360 and i just wanted to do some sculpting so that's what i'm using here and getting into the swing of things i have put together a couple of models already 3d printed a couple i got um i got my little baby batman here he was my first one. That was my first 3D print from Sculpting Software here. And then we went big. We done a couple of fixes on it and we're gonna sand it. We're in the process of sanding this guy and this guy is gonna be wall mounted. He's gonna be an absolute monster. And um, so I'm really excited about that. And I've done a little bit more work just kind of modeling up Batman and just getting him to a point where hopefully I'll be able to start 3D printing him. I did do one or two test prints. Fins are a little bit tricky. 
not gonna lie to you, not the sort of thing that's ideal to be printed on a 3D printer. We did have a little bit of string on it. We had a little bit of a print file, but we're getting there. But if you guys wanna see more of this kind of stuff or more about the evolution of goldfish and all the different types that we have, just let me know. I'd be really interested to know what way this kind of sits with you guys and hopefully it went down well. I hope you enjoyed it. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there and I will talk to you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.